Welcome to another unit in Business Mathematics. This time I'm going to talk about matrices. Matrices, in particular, here I'm talking in this unit about how to calculate the determinant of a matrix. For this, we have three examples where we will work our way through step by step. So let's start with the A, with the smallest one first. Here in A, we only have a 2 times 2 matrix. This is more or less um, the version of matrices where we always aim to get to. So with later exercises or with larger matrices, we always try to simplify them in a way that in the end we only have to calculate determinants of 2 times 2 matrices. Because once we have a 2 times 2 matrix, the determinant is actually just multiplying these two diagonal elements, so the A and the 2, and then subtracting, so going minus, and multiplying the other two diagonal elements. So here the 3 and the 3A. So in this regard, it's basically just A times 2 minus 3 times 3A, giving us this here. Or, if we summarize it, we get minus 7a. And that's already everything there is to this first introductory example. However, once we have a larger matrix, so no longer 2 times 2, but 3 times 3, 4 times 4, whatever, then becomes more problematic. If, as in part b, we have a 3 times 3 matrix, some of you might recall from school the so-called rule of Serres, which applies, but however, only for 3 times 3 matrices. So instead of using this rule here, let's introduce a more general way of approaching matrices which are larger than 2 times 2. And for this, we use some kind of procedure which always reduces the dimensionality of our matrix by one in each step. So from a two times two matrix, uh, from a three times three matrix, we get to two times two matrices. If we were to have a four times four matrix, in the next step we only have, would have a three times three matrix, and in the second step a two times two matrix. So in the end, using this procedure, we can always end up having to calculate only determinants of 2 times 2 matrices. Okay, but how does this procedure work? Well, first off, we select one row or column with as many zeros as possible. If we take a look here, well, we actually have a few possibilities. We could go with first column, third row, first row, second column. I will start simple, select the first column here. Then I'm going to note all the entries in the column or row I selected. So I'm noting here the one, this one, and this zero. For these three numbers, I'm selecting an additional sign. So to get the corresponding sign, I'm starting up here in the upper left with a plus. And then I always switch. I go like plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. Or if I go down, plus, minus, plus. So it will always end up having plus being surrounded by minus, minus, and the minus surrounded by plus, plus, plus. This gives us the sign. So this one here actually has a plus sign. This one is like plus, minus, so it has a minus sign. This zero has a plus here. So I go plus this, minus this, plus this. So that's actually the first two steps. Once I've did those, the next and final step to get this reduced is to always consider the particular value we're talking about. So here I'm talking about this one and then cross out the corresponding row and column. 
So here this element is situated in first row and first column. So I eliminate first row, first column, leaving me with this part with A231. So that's what I have got left here. Determinant of this reduced matrix, which occurs if I delete, eliminate the column and the row assigned to this value. So for this part, I'm here at this value, first column, second row. So I'm eliminating first column, second row. I'm left with 0, 3, 3, 1. That's my reduced matrix here. Finally, I'm at this zero here. This zero, first column, third row. So I'm deleting those two, left with this part up here. Zero, three, A2. I get this one. Now, well, I said select a column or a row with as many zeros as possible. Because if I have a zero here, well, I could stop calculating the stuff back here because multiplied with zero, this is always zero. So this I'll left, I'll leave out in the next few steps. So this reduces to only those two parts. And well, here I have a determinant of a two times two matrix and here as well. And for this, I can use the formulas from the slide before. So here I'm basically going A times one minus two times three. That's this determinant. Back here, I have the minus one, and then in parentheses, zero times one, those two diagonals, minus three times three. Well, then I just summarize all the stuff I have here, giving me in the end a result of a plus three. That's then all there is already to this example. The third example, the C, is now similar to what I did here because this procedure I just proposed works for any size of matrix. So if I here have a four times four matrix, again, I'm selecting a row or column with as many zeros as possible. In this example, I selected here the third column. I could have gone with the fourth row as well. Here there's only one expression which is not zero, here as well. So that's the easiest approach to start with. If I go here, I have zero times, or rather let's start with plus minus plus, so plus zero times minus zero times plus two times something, minus zero times. And as you can see already, I left everything which I would have multiplied with a zero because this will turn out zero in the end. So I'm only left here with the two. Then the only thing left to do in this first step is get rid of the corresponding column and row. So get rid of this one, get rid of that one. So I'm left with the four parts up here, one, two, A2, one, two, A2. Here the A and the three, and in the lower part, the 0, 1, and the 0. So 0, 1, 0. So I reduced my 4 times 4 matrix to a 3 times 3 matrix. Now I can use the same rule again. And I'm seeing here the third row. I have two zeros, only one entry, which is non-zero. So I'm going to use this on this row. If I go here, I see that directly it's plus, minus, plus, so it's plus zero something. I can leave this because, well, zero times something again is zero. Minus one, that's the minus one here, and the two I have from earlier. And then again, plus zero. Again, I'll leave this out. So I only have here this one element in the third row, second column. So I'm erasing third row, second column. I'm left with one A, A3. That's here, this reduced matrix. Then, again, I'm having a two times two matrix. 
and its determinant can easily be calculated as 1 times 3 minus a times a, giving me this expression here. Well, then the only thing left is to simplify this, giving me in the end 2a squared minus 6. And that's already everything there is to getting the determinants of any size of matrix. And well, as you might have already deduced from the discussion here, determinants can only be calculated for square matrices. So the number of columns always needs to be equal to the number of rows. So it works for 2 times 2, 3 times 3, 4 times 4, 5 times 5, and so forth, but not for something like 2 times 3. And well, that's then everything there is to this topic with regard to this exercise. So I say goodbye and see you next time.